see that telephone pole in the foreground, just out here, kind of near the coast. So here we have a fish soup, big chunk of salmon there. Nice homemade bread. She's got a nice hot quiche, chicken quiche. And uh, we're over here at the coast, way out on the peninsula. This is a beach break in Iceland, uh, just kind of random place. Conditions look a little funky right now. Uh, but there's surf. Hey, I thought you were a Filipina. How come you look like an Eskimo? So here's the beach. And uh, there's actually surf out here. But... I don't know, it looks pretty good. There's a peak down there. Actually, it looks a little windy. But you can definitely see the potential. It's just a random beach break out on the Snefferson Peninsula in Iceland. There's some kind of reef break out there. I can't really see it in the fog. But there's definitely some action. I mean, there's just surf all over the place in Iceland. Here goes that other section over there. Well, I'm gassing up in Borganish, and gas is pretty expensive in Iceland. It's about $8 a gallon. 
And uh, so boy, check out this, this backdrop. So there's three quarters of the tank. That's actually about 50 bucks. Not bad. We're about to go under a pretty big tunnel. It actually goes under this entire fjord. It costs 10 bucks to take the tunnel under the fjord, which is a lot, but it saves about two hours. So, I mean, uh, for, for us, it's worth it. We're not in Iceland for very long uh, to make it sensible to, to go around. Plus, the, the gasoline is going like to burn going around. You might as well pay the 10 bucks and take the tunnel. Is it? 's is famous for its hot dogs amongst other things and uh, here she is. One, three, One, two. Ellie yeah and Ingo for short real Icelandic surfers here born and raised so you guys both learned to surf here yeah yeah wow that's pretty intense so um about how many surfers are there on the entire island? Yeah, probably around 15. 15. 20, maybe. Wow, in the entire in the entire country. Yeah. So do you guys surf year round? Yeah. Yeah. Open ocean seal. Yeah. Can you describe your experience with that? Spooky stuff, big animal. You know, it's just like a huge seal. They're really, because my father is like, really curious. Yeah, really curious animals. They're not really friends, so they come pretty close and don't really know. I don't really know if mating season or like territorial and some, but they're just really, really big. And they just come, yeah, like two meters away from you. you just so, like, how big is an open ocean seal? Like, head yay high. Could be, I guess, three, four, four meters long. So like almost like a, a small whale, yeah, yeah. basically, and they might be territorial. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when they're mating in the fall, they can get a little bit aggressive. Wow. Yeah, I surfed in uh, Santa Cruz a, um, 
in uh, Central California, it's the same thing. That there's big elephant seals there. Nowhere near what you guys are describing. But they have bitten people on occasion. So what would you recommend to somebody traveling here to surf who had a sort of average level of experience? For the Arctic surfers .is. Arctic surfers .is. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I guess if you're coming here, just uh, bring one close, something waterproof, the weather here can change really rapidly. If you're like planning on coming here in fall, just stay in a tent. It can be a cool and, and stupid idea, I guess. You have to have a, just check out the weather, the weather changes really rapidly here. Yeah, Problems. so the weather can but change. But you can get like uh, accommodations in most places all over Iceland, so it shouldn't be a problem. Of course, if you have a car, get a good car, four wheel drive possible. Yeah, it's always, I think you can always jump into the car and seek shelter there, and then you're pretty much okay. So these guys, you know, they're born and raised here, they surf here all the time. They have a, a surf tour organization. They have wetsuits and boards. If you go through their organization, you don't even need to bring your equipment. They study the weather. Spots here in the weather can change within hours, and uh, they'll be able to dial, dial you in, set you up with equipment. It's basically like a surf camp, but it sounds like they're kind of flexible, like if you're maybe more experienced, um, and you know, need some general um, orientation to get started, they'll probably be able to help you out with that too. My wife and I, we just happened to be stopping here um, from France on the way back to Honolulu actually, we're pretty far, and uh, I thought I'd bring my wetsuit when I met these guys. So um, they're a great resource, and uh, if you're coming here, um, it's a pretty hardcore environment, and it's not, it's not really easy to get surf um, because of the conditions if you don't know the lay of the land. Um, if you do, there's surf all over the place, really. The things can change really fast. Yeah, like surfing in Iceland, is, it's a, like, a unique experience. Like the landscape here is uh, yeah, completely amazing. different from the rest of the Europe, at least. Also in the world you can surf in conditions like a really good surf and the background could be a glacier coming down the mountain and so on. And I think it's a very common mistake that the surf here is really cold. I've, I've surfed most of my time in a fourth wee suit, no gloves, no worry. It's fine. I only yeah, wear my winter suit in like January, February, March maybe. Maybe April, but then I switch out. So. Okay, so it's not as cold as people think. Yeah, yeah. No, right. If you have the right equipment, it's, yeah. it's not that cold. Side, he said when it's big, there's another spot there. I think he said shipwreck. 